I'm so excited to give a little oral history of 90210. It's my personal favorite show on the CW so far ever. I don't think anything's going to surpass it. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel like it's super underrated. And so many people just think of that first season and it kind of, unless you stuck with it, I think that's like, there's not as many of the people that watched the first, maybe just the first episode and were like, no. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of celebrate it on its 14th anniversary, which um, some people are probably like, why the 14th? That's not as exciting as 15th. I just really like the number 14 and it's kind of a, it's really, I'm really weird about these things. I felt really connected to the show with the number 14 because it ended up having 114 episodes. And when that happened, I was like, this is like a sign from the universe. Like, this is my favorite show. Like, it was so weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's why we're celebrating the 14th anniversary. And Tuno premiered on Tuesday, September 2nd, 2008, which is a really early premiere mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. kind of show. Um, so yeah, it had the same premise as Beverly Hills 90210, which is a family from the Midwest moves to Beverly Hills, California. And it's all about that uh, culture shock. Um, and it had like the same exact setup too with like the family dynamic where in the original, it was a family of four, a mom, dad, brother, sister, and they were Brenda, Brenda and Brandon were twins. This time it's Annie and Dixon who are the same age, but Dixon was adopted by the Wilson family. Um, and the connection to the original, because this isn't just like a flat reboot or like remake. It is like, it's like, a it is a reboot, but it's kind of a spinoff. I wouldn't call it a revival or like a sequel or anything, but, um, Silver is a character in the new 90210 and she is the half sister of Kelly and David who were step siblings in the original. And um, Kelly does show up in the reboot played by Jenny Garth, who is an icon. Um, so yeah, she's the, Silver is like the, the bridge between both shows. And she's now goes to West Beverly Hills High School where her half sister is the guidance counselor, which makes sense. It's canon because Kelly had a, went to college for psychology. Just throwing that out there. Got to put some credibility on Kelly's name. <laughs> <laughs> Some connection so she doesn't yeah. just pop out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, there is like an age discrepancy that I have with Silver though because she her name is Aaron. They call her Aaron in the original series, but um we'll get into her characterization later on when we talk about the pilot. She likes to be called Silver. Um but when she was born in like, like I think season two or three of the original, which would not really make her the age that she is in the reboot. I think she would be like a year older, but I mean like splitting hairs, it's fine. Um, okay, so further into this oral history, there were so many behind the scenes changes that I don't, unless you were really paying attention to the show, you really didn't know how there were like so many cooks in the kitchen and to extend the metaphor, I think there were multiple kitchens. <laughs> so many, so many people had like thoughts of what this show should be and how it should, uh, how it should present this new modern story. So the show was fast tracked as soon as the idea was brought to the CW. Like I want to say, like it was ordered in March two thousand eight, and for it to have aired by September is just oh obscene like that's yeah. crazy um so the original pilot was written by rob thomas who was the creator of veronica mars but before the show aired gabe Sachs and jeff judah who had written uh for freaks and geeks and they created the abc teen drama life as we know it they became the showrunners so there was already like they kept the shell of what rob thomas created and then just completely redeveloped the what the series was like around the characters and it was kind of, it was very in line with the, how the original was in the beginning, because the original series, I think some fans like to think that it was, they, when they think of the show, they think of the high school seasons, which is only the three seasons of that original show, because it was 10 years. But in, in the beginning, it was like, there were really, it was issues based and there were family stories because it was about 
the Walsh family. And they were trying to do that again with the Wilsons. Um, but it was, of course, edgy. And you had to be in 2008, you had to be a little bit edgy and like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. do some things that you can get away with in the CW. Um, but it was still really close to the original and didn't really have its own identity. It was just, I say the season one was a mess. I have a deep love for it, obviously. Um, but for the most part, it was just the characters a little bit 2D and it was really um, plot driven. Like the characters were reacting to things that were thrown in their path mm -hmm. rather than like mm -hmm. really developing in any sort of meaningful way. Um, but that all kind of changed when in like the back half, I want to say that maybe the last quarter of season one, Rebecca Kirshner, at the time her name was Rebecca Sinclair, she stepped in as the new showrunner, I think, and like, I don't know what episode she started in season one, but she came in in season one and sort of like was starting to do some like spring cleaning and like she brought in Naomi's sister and like she started to like really mix it up and make it more of what it would later become. But she became the showrunner for seasons two and three. And she had previously worked on Freaks and Geeks as well and also Buffy and Gilmore Girls. So mm -hmm. like we can trust her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, she retooled the entire show. Like she overhauled it. She changed the look. She changed even like the font of the opening like the credits when it says the cast name like she changed the complete style of it like she hired new writers she built new sets she like completely changed everything and she saved the show and unfortunately I think too many people who were turned off by season one didn't get to see what the show would become uh, which is so unfortunate because seasons two and three were like must watch CW television um, but I think the best things that she did was she ditched the peach pit because what they did to, I'm gonna be real right now what they did to the peach pit and the reboot was really <laughs> a travesty in the original it was like this cute like 50s themed diner it was like a throwback retro thing that's where they hung out and they turned it into this like cutesy like cafe Oh. It was just too much. I did not like it. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she ditched that and she um, she brought in the Beach Club, which was a staple in the original for seasons two and three in the summer season. So they didn't really hang out there, but they did for the rest of seasons two and three, at least. That was like one of the main sets and one of the main locations. And there was much more like um, on location scenes, like outside which gave it a better sense of place. Whereas there were, maybe this is for like security reasons in season one, because there's a lot of media attention. Like when you're making a new 902 and 0, like the paparazzi is going to be on the set. So there's a lot of like just sets and it didn't, it looked really fake <laughs> in season <laughs> one. Um, but like they got to go to the beach and they got to like, they, they changed the school exterior set. Um, it was no longer, I think they used the school from the original series in season one, but in season two, they used the school that was used in the OC, which was, I think it's a college in somewhere in California. It's really pretty. Um, so it gave it a different, uh, a more grand look. And there's also a new opening title sequence, which is, I remember hearing about this. This is an aside. This is a memory. I didn't get to watch the season two premiere live because I don't remember what I was doing, but I had to go to something after school. And the day after at school, I was in class and my friend was telling me about the new title sequence and the way she was describing it. Cause it's, it's very like quirky and out there. Like there's different things spelling out 90210. And she was describing it to me. And I was like, are you making this up? This sounds so weird. And I remember getting off the bus and like running home and <laughs> turning the episode <laughs> on the DVR to watch it. Um, but yeah, I think that the opening, the new opening sequence, which they kept for the remainder of the series was really successful mm -hmm. in kind of, it tells you more about what the show is and the style. And it's, it's really fun. It's nothing like I'd ever seen on the CW. Um, and the original one was they tried to play into the original and then they just used like old footage of the cast that was it was like before they even shot the pilot 
So like Silver's not in character and she's like hanging out. It was just like, it was, it was really weird. Um, I never really liked the season one opening credits, if I'm being honest. I like them. <laughs> That's the thing. Like um, some of our supplementary material, you guys, that we gave us, one of it is the the difference between the opening sequences. And the second one feels like a um like a bumper, you know, like that would play in between the episode right before, like right when you come back from commercial. And I liked it, but I was like, maybe I just like the old way they do title sequences where you see everybody pop up like in the colors and then their names under it. But the second one is sort of the new direction that TV was going in where they weren't Definitely. doing all of that. Yeah, it was very colorful and it took me a while to like to come around to like how they changed the the actual song, the iconic song. It's very like bubbly. It sounds literally like bubbles. Um, mm-hmm. but it's very colorful and it it was just it really matched the vibe of where the show was going. Um And another thing that I've always noted about seasons two and three is that it seems like there was a bigger budget. And if there wasn't, then um, Rebecca Kirshner was just um, using the existing budget more wisely than they did in season one. (laughs) And that's not a drag. That's just an observation. Um, And she's this is a a quote that I've always really loved that she said. Um, she said about season one, the show tried to be a lot of things to a lot of people in its first season. I think the center lies with the generation of kids that are in high school now. And that is piping hot tea because I was um, I was the same age as the characters in the show. Um, and although I never really could relate to them, like I still wanted to see more at something that was more targeted to me because it, 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 she's right like it, they did try to cater to the original audience and then to the new it was just there was they were doing too much in season one and it really needed a refocus um but unfortunately she left the show after seasons two and three and season four and five the final seasons uh mm-hmm. patty carr and laura olson who had worked on private practice life unexpected reba beauty and the beast and rain so many cw shows <laughs> they were the new showrunners and um they were kind of a the the those last two seasons were a little bit of a downgrade but i still really love them they're really exciting seasons far better than season one there's a lot of focus i think season four did a lot they were the college seasons i say that with air quotes because <laughs> they kind of stop talking about college about halfway through season four (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it was like implied that they were going to class and only there were like half of the kids decided not to go to college which was like I feel revolutionary for a teen show Um, Mm. but yeah those seasons even though season five wasn't intended to be a final season they did a lot of they did their homework the Patty and Laura they went back to season one and they did a lot of fan service. There was a lot of callbacks, which I as a longtime fan appreciated that they like brought stuff like back that had been kind of buried or just like forgotten over the years. And it was really, it was a really special season, even though it's, it's not the greatest season, but I love it. Um, in, in addition to showrunner changes, the cast changed quite a bit, not as much as Dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> but in the beginning, there were rumors that Hillary Duff was going to play the role of Annie, although I was doing more reading and apparently she said that wasn't true, but maybe she was offered it and she just, I don't know. Um, but the role ultimately went to Shanae Grimes Beach, who I love and I'm glad she got the role of Annie. Um, something that's really interesting to me is that Dustin Milligan, who played Ethan, was the first actor cast um, before Annalyn McCord, which iconic, like they found their Naomi like right at the beginning. Um, But continuing the trend of like season one being a little bit messy, Ethan left at the end of season one. I don't know if that's a spoiler to you guys or like a shocker, (laughs) but like he leaves after season one and Liam, who you guys didn't meet by watching the pilot, he's played by Matt Lanter, who I think you guys know. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've seen yeah. him. Everyone looks familiar. Yeah, I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We definitely. <laughs> yeah, he was like the new leading man. It seemed like they were struggling to find their Dylan, and Ethan. I love Dustin Milligan, but Ethan was a really sad excuse for a, 
a, um, a Dylan who was played by Luke Perry. Um, he, Ethan wasn't like bad enough to be the bad boy, but he was like doing bad things, but he couldn't like, it was hard to like him. And he also, he dated two of the main cast members and then liked a third of the girls by the end of season one. So it was like, we really burned through too much story and he needed to yeah. get out of here. Um, but yeah, and then in season two, two new characters, Teddy and Ivy, who I love so much, um, are added to the cast. But like, luckily, the core cast of the teens, in air quotes, um, were locked for the whole series. So everyone, all the kids that you met in season one, besides Ethan, stuck around for the whole series, which is kind of um, unheard of, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in season one, also tried to, as I've said, cater to the original audience and brought back, in the end, only three characters, Kelly played by Jenny Garth, Brenda played by Shannon Doherty, which was a huge get because she was only in the first four seasons of the original and she hadn't been in oh, the wow. show since season four. So getting Brenda back was huge. And Tori Spelling came back as Donna for a couple episodes. And yeah, that's pretty much the history. Although I, I also want to, say too that something that Rebecca Kirshner did in seasons two and three that I didn't realize until doing a full watch of the original series is that she honored some storylines like she didn't rip them off she just kind of like did a nod to some of the storylines yeah. and that's not something they ever really did in season one or even seasons four and five I don't think but there were some storylines where it was like oh so they were kind of like doing winks to the original series within the narrative instead of trying to be very heavy handed with it. But yeah, that's my history of 90210. I'm sure I left a lot out, but um, yeah, that's like what nobody really talks about in like the later half of the series, like all the behind the scenes stuff. That's really cool though. Cause like with Rebecca coming in, it feels like in the interview, she's like, I have like three binders, two mood boards and a vision <laughs> for the future. <laughs> give me the show and I will give you a, a, a wonderful product that stands on its own. Yeah, she came in with a vision where I felt like there wasn't really a vision besides like, let's get 90210 back on TV and everyone kind of like scrambled. And it, I mean, that's a huge task to undertake for any producer. So like my hat is off to Rob Thomas and the Gabe Sachs and Jeff Judah because that's a huge undertaking. I can't even imagine like the network notes they were getting, the studio notes they were getting, like everything. Like I can't even imagine. And like for her to come in and just be like, I can help steer the ship in the right direction. I've always like, even at the time, I remember like really idolizing her because I was like, you saved my show and made it something even greater. <laughs> it's really interesting hearing about the history because I know over here, when 90210 started, it was, it had a lot of big promo over here. I'm pretty sure it was on E4 or Channel 4, one or the other. But, and then I knew about its reputation that uh, it wasn't exactly what people were expecting and that it was considered lackluster and a lot of people would have considered it a flop. I didn't know that it went on and actually got better afterwards. It was only recently I found out that it did run for five years. And I was like, how is that a flop if it ran for five years? Did you hear uh, from me? <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> You enlightened me. Um, uh, but yeah, and, and that's actually pretty impressive. And it does say a lot to the showrunners that took over afterwards that they managed to turn it into something that stood the test of time. I do think like, it does sound a bit like Batwoman and then it got better after season one, but because of the sins of season one, not as many people were watching as they should have been. So it, history may not be kind to it, but it, I'm, I'm glad that it turned into the show you wanted it to be. And I'm glad that it lasted that long because five seasons is nothing to be sneezed at. Mm -mm. And I wonder if the water got poisoned um, because people who went in with certain expectations didn't get what they wanted. And so then we're telling people, oh, it's bad. And it's like, well, maybe let go of your expectations and just watch the show. I, mm -hmm. um, and I know that we're kind of learning that now when it comes to reboots, even though, of course, people do have um, their feelings in a reboot if they really like the original and may not tune in if the reboot seems like it's, it's sort of name only and there's nothing that they're giving that is going to make you feel like the show that you enjoyed before but at the same time maybe because we are living in the era of reboots remakes and revivals uh in hindsight people like, like if you have if you gave up on it in the, two, the late 2000s come back to it now yeah. um, with fresh <laughs> eyes yeah I feel like I want to say this is one of like the first like 
big like reboots I don't know maybe I'm mm. I don't know I think so I feel like it is because they weren't as like common back then as they are now um so I know like the audience was kind of split like there were 15 year olds like me who were just watching Gossip Girl era CW like looking for the next teen soap and then there were the fans of the original who probably grew up with it from 1990 through 2000 who were so the show was only off for eight years so they were maybe 20s 30s so they were a little bit older maybe even older than that and they came in maybe expecting more more Brenda more Dylan maybe Brandon and like they were expecting something like that or a better um representation of the show they loved but I mean again it's hard when a show is being made to cater to 15 year olds and 35 year olds and trying to like marry all those worlds like it's not going to be done so if you're like this isn't the show I remembered it's like of course it's not because it's it's 28 years later yeah. is that the right 28 I don't know I can't do math in my head but it was a long time <laughs> 18 18 right I don't know yeah 2008 19, yes 18 19, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's kind of where um, people are at with Gossip Girl, the HBO Max's Gossip Girl, and then like comparing it to CW's. Yeah. And it is funny seeing like late 20s, early 30s folks like arguing with new Gossip Girl fans who love the HBO Max version. And it's just like, you have to let the teens have this one. Just yeah. let, like, mm-hmm. it's their Gossip Girl in the same way for 90210. It was y'all's 90210. And the older fans were like, you either continue to watch or you just, it's not for you anymore. It's okay. Um, just yeah. tune into what it gave you, gave you. It's always so funny to me when I see commentary that's like, this is nothing like what my version was like. And it's like, well, you have your version already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And no one's taking that from you. Nothing that happens in a reboot can hurt you <laughs> true but uh do buy the dvds if they're available y'all like <laughs> we are living in the air where things are getting pulled off of streaming we do not have the box set yeah go get the box set if it has thankfully, one. thankfully i do like that was my annual treat to myself when the show was airing is like every time the dvds of 902 come out i'd go to target the day of and buy them <laughs> nice i miss that era um no but i totally get where you're coming from because i know that um the iconic um crystal versus alexis fight from dynasty season one was a recreation of the actual crystal and alexis fight and the, the original dynasty and all you have to do is look at the comments on the on the youtube video to say this is not the show i watch this is horrible why is it so over dramatic and like it's two completely different generations watching two completely different shows you know what i mean i love how they're calling one soap over dramatic compared to another so right exactly <laughs> and then I, I out of interest i did go back and watch the original crystal and alexis fight from the original dynasty and whew, yeah, I wouldn't be saying that's a good thing. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's two different generations. And of course, there's going to be that clash when it comes to that kind of thing, because people have their own version of what it was. And maybe 90210 was a little bit more susceptible to it, because like you said, the original show had only been off the air for what, eight years. So of course, those fans were going to go after they'd left their show for what they thought was the end, come back to it and then be surprised by maybe what they got. Whereas then the young ones tuning in would be like, why is there so much family drama? I don't know from what they were expecting to be like a, a teen soap. So I just think it, it deserved a little bit of like a grace period while it figured out what it needed to be. Because if we've all seen the pilot now, it did, it did kind of need some time to figure out what it wanted to be. A great pivot into our pilot discussion. Mm, yes. So Indeed. I'm <laughs> thoughts, prayers. <laughs> uh, I liked it. It was actually refreshing having like grown up in an era where we, you know we started with um, normal problems in teen dramas to then like tra- um, transition into the problems are at an eleven and they sometimes involve supernatural situations. It was nice tuning into a pilot where like the biggest things happening was plagiarism <laughs> <laughs> and like, and like a, a and love child thing. yes and a love child it was, like, it was very like low stakes for the teens I really really enjoyed that yeah no I would agree with that and I, I, I watching it back it's 
it's really interesting hearing some of the things you said, Reid, because I had some similar thoughts while watching it. But I will start with exactly how Sabrina started and say I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun and it did, it really took me back to that era of television. I think in 2008, it's a lot of people would have said, why is this trying to be that? And why is this trying to be that? But I will say I watched that and it reminded me of that kind of era of TV, even though maybe it was a little lost for its time. Looking back now, it definitely reeks of that kind of like late uh, 2000s kind of television. Um, it was a lot of fun. And yes, it was low stakes, but like, like, we, like we said a few weeks ago, the reason those teen dramas work so well is because yes, it's low stakes. We're not dealing with supernatural entities or whatever, but they're very high stakes to the teenagers in question and the characters in question. So it felt like you were watching their story and you, you did end up rooting for them in the end. I really liked it. And I, there, I do have some notes that we will get into it, but I did want to lead with, I really, really liked it. My heart is so full so far. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, like, it's a very, one, a flawed show. But like that's any show and it's a flawed uh pilot but this episode is such a time capsule to me because every single song in this in this episode i downloaded on itunes 15 year old me was like downloading them on itunes and listening to them that adele uh song cue at the birthday party which i'm sure we'll get to a discussion about that scene um it, that's when i discovered adele and like my life changed like that chasing pavements moment was incredible um but yeah, I told you guys before, like, this is one, I think the episode of the single episode of television that I think I've watched the most because not just like when it came out, I remember like for that whole week um, of its premiere, I think I watched this episode at least like 10 times. Like I remember my brother, like not even seeing the episode, he would just hear me like, you're watching it again. I'd be like, yeah, leave <laughs> me alone. I'm watching it for a fifth time. <laughs> But I, this is like an episode that like I could probably recite it in my sleep. Like I've seen it so many times. Like it just brings me so much comfort. It's that, that episode of TV that I can just turn on and for like 40 minutes, I'm 15 for and everything else goes away. Um, but yeah, it is kind of um, all over the place. But I, it's just like it was nothing like what I was experiencing in high school. And I think that's another thing that I really appreciated, too. Mm -hmm. yeah I, it's fun it's a lot of fun and the song cues were amazing though i will say if you watch it on twtv.com you will not get the song cues that um reed is talking about <gasps> oh no you didn't yeah. get the adele moment yeah no no um that's another reason why it reminds me of shows from that era because the whole media versions always had different songs than the ones oh, that are on tv that's so heartbreaking <laughs> sent me the original i want it now <laughs> <laughs> and the cold play opening so like so i had the subtitles on and it had that cold play song that um viva la vida yeah that like everyone was listening to it but you can't actually so it's saying at the but the lyrics are at the so bottom but it's like a different it? song no but it <sighs> that song's a great intro for the show though <laughs> it just, i was just like i was reading it so i was like if i could hear this this is an excellent music choice for the beginning of this series but i could not hear i don't remember what it was playing but oh, it's not that song. That's such a bummer. I had no idea. <laughs> I should have watched the E4 version. I'm telling you, I would probably have heard it. Um, no, but I do agree. It, it, remind, it reminded me so much of that era. And I obviously, I hadn't watched it at the time, but it definitely reminded me of the kind of program that would be on back then. And it, I, would def, I would have watched shows like that back in the day. And it made me want to watch more. I like flaws Ooh. and all. It really did. And you sent us the final scene of, from the series. And I was like, Which do I do I want to click on this? Do I want to? I don't want to spoil this for myself. So I think if there's a test of whether I enjoyed the show or not, my uh, doubts whether I should click on the final scene does highlight that I, I wanted to stick with the show. Um, and I think I it's on my list now. I will say that. I really enjoyed it. Oh, Wait, did you get play scene. though? Did you yeah. watch the final scene? I did, I did. I went with okay. it in the end, yes. I, I, I did my homework. <laughs> <laughs> I love that final scene. Oh, that's it's so dramatic. The uh, the One Republic song. I remember they used that song before it became a hit. And it just every time I watch it, it gives me chills because that song is so like bittersweet and romantic in the way I'm getting chills thinking about it the way it pans out with his voice at the end and it goes into the sky oh it's just everything um but it 
it sucks that it, it was a rushed ending, um, but it still works for a series finale. Um, mm-hmm. But every time I hear that song, I lived on the radio. I'm like, no, turn it off because I don't want to. I don't want to hear it again. It's nine hundred two and zero song. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least we got that song right. The, the version, yeah. of <laughs> and it, it it does such a good job of scoring the scene and um, how important. And it is like there's a really wonderful like moment happening, an engagement happening. Spoiler alert! Um, but the but like it's you also know it's the end of the show, so you mm-hmm. feel like like um I haven't even watched the series like like that, and I'm sitting here like I'm on the tarmac with them, and I'm I don't want to <laughs> say goodbye. <laughs> I know it was so sad that episode um did you guys notice in the pilot a certain someone makes a cameo yes, yes. um and in not a... the way I thought yeah <laughs> yeah that scene is scandalous we don't have to go into that but it was Meghan Markle <laughs> right, yeah. yes. and I was like hey Megan <laughs> like, I'm assuming I'm not gonna see you again but hey yeah. I don't think she popped up again in season one um but yeah she definitely left a lasting impression on the show right <laughs> I was surprised that first for all of like the 30 seconds she was on screen her actual name was on the opening guest credits usually they would leave someone for, yeah. like, for the closing guest credits and I was like is she coming back and then I was disappointed that she didn't show up again <laughs> I don't think I know that um I don't know if you saw in the credits in I watched it again with you guys so that's like another watch in my long line of watching this episode <laughs> the credits are like part one part two because that the series premiere aired with a, a two parter with episode one and episode two but you don't really need to watch episode two to like get like it's not really a two-parter it's mm-hmm. they just aired two episodes mm-hmm. um but I can't remember if she pops up in episode two which would make sense if she had her name in the credits but I don't know you're right that is weird that she's in the credits hmm. but it's a it's a cameo that everyone talks about <laughs> <laughs> uh i didn't know she was in it so i will say that no that was a surprise <laughs> but i yeah. didn't spoil it for you guys <laughs> yeah that was i was like i wonder when i saw that line i saw like the cameo and i was like oh i wonder who it's gonna be i did not think it was gonna be her and i did not realize it was gonna be in that way but you know <laughs> it set up this storyline about ethan and um annie seeing something she wasn't meant to rather well mm-hmm. it served its purpose <laughs> who are your favorite least favorite characters from what you've seen hmm. who do you like... think my favorite character is that's a, a two-part question <laughs> naomi is i'm assuming she's i would have guessed favorite. that time she's one guessed. of my favorites and the way they develop her is so amazing i know some people might think of annalyn based on that poem she released this year but the way that she devours this role as Naomi is in the way um, she keeps developing her into, they make her sort of comedic as the show goes on more like mm-hmm. Fallon, what we see as Liz as Fallon. That's kind of how Naomi develops. Um, I kind of went off on a tangent about Annalyn because she's really good. Um, <laughs> I do love Naomi, but silver is my favorite. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not like I liked her from the pilot, but again, they develop her really well as the series goes on I like that no I liked her as well um I'm trying to think I really liked all of the characters I don't know if you're supposed to um but (laughs) I uh it's kind of like dynasty and that a lot of people are like patchy not so great people but yet you're still end up rooting for them in the end um I I really like Naomi now because I think the character when she came in I thought that that she was going to be portrayed as quite one-dimensional and they do quite a bit of character work in that one episode alone. So by the end of the episode, you're like, yeah, I could really get behind her. And, and Annalyn played the character really well. I have to say, I really liked her. That scene at her birthday party when she's reading the text, that shot mm-hmm. of her reading it is one of my favorite shots of the whole series because Annalyn just gives you gives it all, mm-hmm. gives it her all, mm-hmm. gives you everything. <laughs> um, another fun tidbit that I want to, share with you guys is sort of like a dorky like tv thing is that um when season two opens there's quite a contrast so when season one opens the first people we see are the wilson family right but when season two opens the first person we see is naomi running on a beach toward an older man that's a not so great storyline but it's her daydream and like we meet her in um 
summer school. That's a whole other long story. I won't get into it. Um, but it's they consciously shift the perspective from Annie to Naomi, which I think mm. was no shade to Shanae because she's amazing. A really wise choice because Naomi ended up being the stronger character compared to Annie. So they really put her in the forefront and she was kind of like the de facto lead moving forward of the show. So I think that's really interesting. Like we don't even see, I don't think we see Annie in the season two premiere. I wish I would have made you guys watch that episode, but I didn't want to give you too much homework. Um, <laughs> we don't see her until like maybe like five minutes into the episode, which is like, mm. look, looking back, different. I'm like, oh, that's, they were really intentional with that shift from the get go. They were, and I can see that even coming from like the pilot. Um, not that I didn't like Annie, uh, but she is sort of a character who she's like wide eyed and she's coming to this new world and she's not as fast paced as them. Um, and so it's it's easy to sort of get attracted to the other characters and want to know like what's going on in their home life. I think the moment that I knew that I liked Annie was when you're on when you're in a stage with her and she's doing the spring awakening yeah. moment and she just lets go and she's overshadowing the other girl and 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 it's like such a mess but it reminds me of like <laughs> teenagehood where she like she thinks she's killing it and like in comparison to the other girl she is but it's she's killing it in a way that a teenager would yeah and, and we're not thinking about everybody else it was just really great before we move on from another two i have to ask sabrina who were you shipping if anyone. I didn't ship anyone. I got vibes though that I wasn't sure about. Um, first off, and this isn't about ships, my favorite dynamic is is Annie and Dixon. I love them as siblings. Mm -hmm. And so that was like the dynamic I was really into. And I was like, okay, so that's my like, that's my sibling vibe. Where is the ship? And I was like, I don't have a ship, but I have, I was like, does anything happen between Naomi and Ryan Eggold's character? Because there was a vibe there. And I was like, she's underage, so no. No, Do thankfully. Thankfully, uh, Mr. Matthews never hooks up with a student. Although, okay. okay, he kind of did in season one, but it was an undercover cop. <laughs> 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 so like, but when it came out that he was like dating the student, even though he knew it was undercover cop, he like, he lost his job for a little bit. He does come back, yeah. um, but his character is only in it for the high school seasons and he leaves by season four. So oh, okay. that was a bummer. I really like him. I liked him too. I mean, he's a little too irreverent for me. I was like, Sarah, you're going to end up in the class, the, the office with a bunch of parents. If they, they, they did ever tell you, tell them what you say to them on the regular. But um, I just saw those two. And I was like, this, if we were going the way the teen dramas typically go, y'all going to end up in a broom closet by episode 10. And I don't want it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he does um, date, and I believe have a child with Naomi's older sister when she comes okay. in in season two, which, oh my God, I love her sister. She's incredible. And then um, just more spoilers. I believe, if I remember this correctly, Mr. Matthews ends up with Annie's mom. So Lori Laughlin. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think that's how they leave the show in season, at the end of season three, they like move to Paris together to raise his son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah, it's just like Laughlin really, out, really <laughs> <Yes>. out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll just go with that. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's a soap opera for you though. Yeah. yeah you never know true. where it's going to land. Oh my God. I, if I, if we had like another full like hour, I would just like tell you guys everything that happens and just like watch your brains explode. Uh, but we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but so you asked me the ship question, but do you have like a big ship read that you fell in love with and stayed through the whole show with? Not in season one. I didn't care about Annie and Ethan. No. Um, and then when Liam comes in, he originally dates Naomi. I didn't really love them together, um, which I that might be a shock to you guys that Naomi and Liam had a thing mm -hmm. after seeing the Annie and mm -hmm. Liam get engaged. Um, I liked Annie and Liam. He kind of was like weird with her in the end of season one while he was dating Naomi. Um, and there's like this whole thing, but I did really like them. I really liked in season two, Silver starts dating Teddy. That's one of my favorite. They do date, but um, I don't know how much I want to give away. Um, he, okay, I'll just give it away. He comes out in season three. 
so th- and that's another thing that like develops that friendship and that relationship um and I, I even though it's not like a ship that ends up together quote unquote I really love that relationship and seeing how they both navigate because there's a love there and even though they can't be together anymore once he comes out like she struggles with it but then she's like I'm your ally I love you so much you're like we're soulmates I love you like I really love how they the show handled that friendship and that relationship even though season four kind of I'm getting memories it kind of like complicates it all over again I really (laughs) I really love that relationship (laughs) that sounds nice actually that they were able to do that in a way that's not like gross like you know like where we I'm assuming that they didn't do it that way where they um they make it such a big problem that you have to fight like and have really weird conversations you know I like that it transformed like the love that she already had just pivots you know and it's not I'm assuming it's not like an angry thing she was kind of hurt a little bit because the way he came out was kind of a lot um so she was kind of like um hurt a little bit but she she sees how much he's struggling and she's like that's more important than how I feel so they have this really important conversation at a bonfire and it like solidifies like she's like I'm regardless of how I feel I might still be processing it but I'm on your side and I I that's why Silver's one of my favorite characters because she's kind of queer coded. Um, but she's like that character that I feel like anybody can see themselves in if you're like the outsider. Cause she's mm-hmm. the she's the rich girl that's mean about uh, she's mad about being a rich girl and she's like, I'm not a rich girl. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to be like the every girl. Um, but that's why I love her because I can I saw myself in her the most. She doesn't seem like she's like, she's like. How do I describe her? Because I remember she was prickly, but then you could tell mm-hmm. like she's very vulnerable. Yeah, she's, she's a gooey a, center. Yeah, and a wicked sense of style. I really liked her her outfits. I mean, it was obviously very 2008, but I'm oh, like, yeah. if I had watched oh, that, I wouldn't try to emulate everything she wore. And it gets even better. That's another thing. They really changed the styles. Like they elevated. It looks less like teenagers shopping at like, in season one, it was like a, a attainable style. Mm-hmm. for teenagers but then they kind of elevated it a little bit in seasons two and three where it was more aspirational but it was still it. like um relatable like the way they dressed um but oh she cuts her hair in season two it's amazing oh the bob she, right yeah she has it, a bob, yeah. Clip. It was very and then nice. it gets even shorter in season three which oh, i always love the way they use silver's appearance to um characterize her more than any other character i feel like i can see why she's your favorite yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i know i've championed jessica straup on this podcast before but oh yeah i always loved her yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of the many faces when i was watching i was like i know yeah <laughs> you look familiar 